Welcome to the third lecture on computational geometry. Today we will talk about two problems, how to guard art galleries and how to triangulate polygons. And we will learn how these two problems relate to each other. We will start with the art gallery problem. In the art gallery problem, you want to guard your art gallery. You have some pieces of art standing around, but there are many burglars in town and they always try to steal your art pieces. If you, there is only one piece that you cannot see at some point, they will immediately steal it. So you want to place some cameras and you want to make sure that every single piece of your art gallery is seen by these cameras. If we want to formalize that as a geometry problem, that means that we have some simple polygon P, that's basically our whole art gallery, that's all the rooms that we have there. And we assume that it's simple, so there are no holes, and of course there are no self-intersections. And then you want to place a camera C here. Now the first Does question this camera is, see? what and what type of polygon is it that this camera sees? Oh, we can mark the area that's visible by C. Basically, you just can rotate a ray around C and you can mark whatever is hit by this ray. So now it uh, touches this corner, so it would go on like this, keep rotating, and this is all the points that can be seen by this camera. And such a polygon, the orange polygon here, that's called a star-shaped polygon or a star-shaped region. The definition of a star-shaped region is just that there's one point that can see everything. It comes from stars, like if you want to draw a star, this will be a, probably a very ugly star, but here there is one point inside where I can see everything. And the generalization of this is the star-shaped region. And to formally define what visibility is, we will just say that some point Q is visible from our camera if the segment between Q and C completely lies inside the polygon. So this point Q here is visible, but if the point would be here in the blue region, this is not visible because these points here do not lie inside the polygon. Okay, so we know we can place one camera here and we know what we can see, but we cannot see everything. So we have to place more cameras. But of course, cameras are very expensive, so we want to use very few cameras to see everything. And that is the art gallery problem. Find the minimum number of cameras that you have to place inside this polygon such that you can see the whole polygon. You can see every corner of your art gallery. The bad thing is that this problem is MP hard. So minimizing the number of cameras is very tough. We don't know how to do it efficiently. But we can find a very good solution. And this is something that we want to do in this lecture. And to find a good solution, we will use a technique that's very standard in computational geometry. So we are given here some polygon. It's a simple polygon, but it can still be huge, and we don't know much about it. And we want to boil it down to easier cases. So we want to simplify the polygon, and we want to discretize it. And then we get some smaller pieces, and for these smaller pieces, we can easily find the optimum solution. And then we put them together and we get a solution for the whole thing. So we want to partition our polygon into smaller polygons, into pieces, where there is a very easy solution. What kind of pieces make sense for that? What kind of pieces should we aim for? In general, it would be great if we can partition it into these star-shaped regions, because for every star-shaped region we know that one camera is enough. But it's not so easy to partition it into star-shaped regions, because star-shaped regions still can be very big. Where else is it very easy to guard something? If we get a convex polygon, then every point sees every other point. That's our definition of convex, which we had in the first lecture. So if we can partition it into convex polygons, then for each of them we can just pick any point and place a camera there and it finds everything. So here, for example, this is clearly not convex, but we could add some edges here, cut this part off, cut this part off, and then we get some convex pieces. And now 
all these sub polygons that we get are convex and for each of them we can just take one camera. So here we could get a nice solution, just place one camera in each of these sub polygons. How can we even further reduce the number of cameras that we need? I mean, if we look at these two polygons here, there, it's enough to use one camera. We can just place a camera here on the corner that belongs to both. And then we have covered both of them at the same time. Also, we can, instead of using these two, place someone here. Instead of these two, we can place a camera here. And now we only use four cameras. That's even better. Actually, this is not completely convex. I forgot to add this edge here. But the solution is still the same. All these cameras see the whole polygon. So this is how an algorithm could look like. We partition the polygon into these convex regions and then we place cameras somewhere where we want to cover all these regions. But since it's hard to estimate how large these polygons will be, how many we have, and that and hence how many cameras we need and how many of these polygons one camera can cover, what we will do is we will make it a bit simpler even. Instead of partitioning the polygon into any convex polygons, we will only partition it into triangles. And every triangle is by definition convex. So if we partition the polygon into triangles, then we immediately have our convex polygons and we can place the cameras somewhere to cover all them, then we cover everything. And then the task that is left is where do we place the cameras so that we can cover as many triangles as possible. So here, for example, if I place one camera here, then I cover all these triangles. If I place a camera here, then I cover all these triangles. A camera here covers all these, then I need one more to cover these, and a final one to cover this part. So with five cameras here, I would find a solution. Before we had four, but five is still quite close. And because we want to prove some things, there is one theorem that we want to get. And the theorem states that we can triangulate every simple polygon. So however this polygon looks like, we can always add edges inside such that every face or every subregion becomes a triangle. And second, we get exactly n minus two triangles if the input polygon has n corners. But how can we prove this theorem? We will prove both statements at the same time using induction. So we will start with a polygon that has exactly three corners. That's the smallest number we can have. This is automatically a triangle, and it is also one triangle, so we can get exactly n minus two triangles. Now assume that we've shown the theorem for all polygons that have up to n minus one vertices. Then we want to show it from there for all the polygons that have exactly n vertices. To do that, we pick one convex corner V. So that's a corner where the internal angle is less than 180 degree. Such a corner always exists. You can verify that easily with a polygon formula that the sum of the angles is 180 times n minus two. And now we take its neighbors on the boundary of the polygon. So we get the neighbor W and the neighbor U. And we want to connect these if we can directly connect them with an edge, then this separates the polygon into one triangle and one other polygon with n minus one corners. If the segment intersects the boundary, then there are some corners inside this triangle. And we pick the corner that is furthest away from UW. And then we connect this corner to X. How do we know that we can add this segment? Well, x is the furthest away from uw, so if you just look at this strip here, there cannot be any other vertex of the polygon in it, so there cannot be any other corner. But if there is no corner inside here, then it cannot be that the boundary goes in and goes out again. So there can be no part of the boundary that's intersected by the segment, and that means that the whole segment lies inside the pol polygon. So we can definitely add it. So in the left case, we get a triangle and a polygon of size n minus one. That gives us one triangle and n minus three triangles, which is n minus two. And in the right case, we get two polygons. The green one, let's say it has m vertices. So by induction, it gives us m minus two triangles. And the orange one has all the other vertices 
and v and x also. So it has n minus m plus 2 because these are in both polygons. So by induction we get n minus m triangles. And together this again is n minus 2. So that means that we can partition every polygon with n vertices into n minus 2 triangles. And those triangles we will use in the next part to guard the art gallery.